able to do it. So obviously this is a new add-on feature that we're going to be obviously offer our clients. Uh, there's an opportunity for us to uh, use something that's pretty state of the art and obviously gives us a much uh, a much better better report for our owners. Um, so I'll let obviously Taylor go through uh, how we do it, um, and then I think we're going to do get a couple of people up to give them a, a bit of a go. Um, and then once uh, once the team from Inspection Express is finished, we'll quickly go through maybe um, a rundown if we've got time. But I've got a bit of interesting time. Uh, we'll do that at our next meeting, but just a rundown on how we're going to package this up so that we can sell it out for hundreds of people too. Okay. All right. Cross the sale. I'm going to be going at about 360 virtual tours today. Can I ask, has anyone actually used the camera before a 360 tour? So we're all pretty, oh, you've used it? Yeah, and what did you use it for? Did you use it as a routine inspection or just a Oh, okay, perfect. So I think you guys are going to be able to get a good show then. Just a bit of a rundown. I'm going to first take you through three of Hazel's bit and you just can see what they're going to look like. And then we'll go ahead, hop into the app, and we'll create a 360 inspection together. And then I'm going to show you how you prepare an expert report on screen. And then I'm going to go over how you can take the picture as well. So it's just so easy. I'm just in the Inspection Express admin portal at the moment. But just heading down to your screen, you see the plan B on the left hand side here. So if we want to plan B title, can mm -hmm. anyone see the screen there? Mm -hmm. Can you just see the plan B? Yeah. Now you'll notice here this Inspection Express panel and branding is appearing too. However, upon your setup of your Inspection Tool, um, you're all able to color and brand in this Inspection Tool. You can add them to panels. However, if you'd like to, just add them as you want. Now, if I move this out of the way too, you'll notice my Inspection Express logo is appearing on your screen to see the good. So the logos are actually shared in two sets. This is your 360 inspection. So they're branding all of your 360 images, but they're also actually covering your site as well. So if I take you down to step two here on your table to share, if I can just minimize the size of the screen to see it, I'll go back and back to the screen just to show you. You can amend them from the screen. Let's see how you'd like. If I scroll down just to step three here, this is where you can upload and Hazel share some video. So this is really beneficial for you too. And then you might want to highlight some of the different colors that you can be offering when you provide your people with an inspection express. So you can always keep this as a part of your tool. If I scroll down to step four as well, um, this is where Hazel can share an inspection. So we still have done a bit of a gem open for you. Again, you can amend the colors here. And you can also amend the theme as well. Um, I actually can't change the colors too, but instead this is just a bit of a demo that we have for you. You can change all of the titles and the description here just by tapping into the inspection if you want. Just lastly, down in step five at the bottom here, we also have the option to copy and delete. So you'll notice at the top of the screen here we have each um, inspection sample type. We've got your marketing virtual tour and then of course your table to brand your tool as well. So if I take you through the marketing virtual tour, let's just call it the marketing virtual tour. I'm going to take you through the marketing virtual tour. I'm going to take you through the marketing virtual tour. You can navigate through the packaging options if you'd like to. We can select these area bubbles at the bottom of the screen here, or we can navigate through the property via those so you see this art rental event here, so you can just annotate that huge event on screen. So that's the left hand side of your screen. You can see down the bottom of your screen here is the property, so you can use all the details on the side. So I can enter all of these entries via these art rental events. So I'm now in the property virtual event here, and if I scroll down, there's my logo again, and all of my screen are consistent. And I can simply just click this button. So I guess it's a good way for me to do this in the first place to just see what my screen looks like. I can see it quite easy just now, um, but I would do this in a, in a much easier way. But I can also swap colors if I want. So if I do this one, if I need to make it pop, I can swap it out. So these are what your cameras look like. It might be a bit dark here for you to see, but you've just got your tripod here. We've got a locking mechanism, so you can adjust your pole there, 
Pre-populated and entering the spectrum for those who wish to know, so we're going to go ahead and just read this one. Just entering the inspection here on everything from software designer. I'll send us a note today. I'd like to send this one to you. <coughs> and all I'm going to do to connect my camera here is simply selecting um, all 16 buttons that you see. So I'm just going to click this one. I'm just going to select that one very quick. Then hit the so we use um, Bluetooth to connect to the Wi-Fi within the 360 cameras. So you don't need internet connection wherever you are. These cameras actually have their own little Wi-Fi that they're connecting to via Bluetooth. So I'm just selecting the green here, and it's just going to keep going. You will have one extra step for the first time you're connecting to your camera. You just have a pop-up appearing that just needs to be enabled with the required permission. So just be you know, Process. Yeah. So we, we do that obviously pre enter the property, or when we are inside the property, set it all up, then press reconnect. Yeah, I would do it once you've set up. So you did phone or iPad, whatever device you yeah. need to be sort of within range. Yeah. So you just want to go turn it on, um, pop it into the first room that you'd like to export, yeah. and then go down to the view of your camera and set it to the phone. Okay. So it is going to capture all of us in the room here. It might be a bit dark, so I don't know if we're going to see your faces, but I will set up that shadow again just at the bottom of the screen. And this is going to take my first image for me. Two faces. <laughs> and um, we do actually have the option to blur faces out as well. So if I select them here, I might blur my face Please, out here. Please, don't. Please, 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 please. Charles, he's off the bottom line. Off the bottom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> picking on you. Why is that blur feature there so we can blur out faces? I will just try to do this. <laughs> so that's the first photo we've captured within our entrance through there. And so rude. So you've just taken one photo. How many photos would you sort of recommend? Is it just the one with all the 360? Yeah, no, it's completely up to you. So I'd be suggesting to pop it as close to the centre of the room as possible. As for the height, I generally change between the floor and the ceiling there, and you can take multiple images. So for the kitchen, for example, you might want to take one 360 shot with all the cupboards being open, and then one again with all the cupboards being open. It just saves you the time of this. again on the screen there. 
I know I'm going to select the image I've already taken up so it's taking it back to me so that's going to be really important. Alright, and now I'm just going to use maybe outside that door I'll pop the tripod if Sam gets something out of there and we'll pretend that that is our boundary for today and I'll show you how we can create those new points as well. Sarah. Alright, so all you're going to do is simply like Sarah just done there, pop the tripod out in the next room and I'm now selecting our boundary area in the corner of the screen. I was like, oh god, I'm in trouble here. <laughs> That's going to generate our second photo for us. So there we go, we've just moved in. Okay. It's already on. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Is that a little bit better? No. No. <laughs> it won't make an effect here, but it's just for. Oh, probably for the people at the back on Zoom there. Yeah. Oh, so much better. Thank you. Oh, okay. Perfect. Oh, and we've lost our thing again. I think that's just when I let my um, laptop go to sleep there. It's just doing that. That's all right. I'll just keep touching it. Now. All right. So the close-up condition shots. So again, I'm going to use my crosshairs. I'm going to pick somewhere on the wall here. I'm just going to pick next to me. Just pretend there's some damage to my wall here. So I'm now moving my crosshairs and I'm going to be selecting that condition icon from the bottom of the screen there. And then again, it's just asking me to select the feature that I'd like to pin that condition shot to. So let's go walls here. And it's now opened my camera within the app here. So yeah, it's not the 360 camera you're using. So I can obviously turn my flash on if I'd like to. And then I can just capture that photo of the damage to my wall there, as many as I'd like. 
Um, has anyone actually used the ruler feature before as well? Just at the top of the screen there. Does anyone utilize this? Yeah, I see it there, but I've never done So this is actually going to measure damages to your wall, or you can use it to also measure fridge spaces or things like that. So it's actually really handy. I'm not too sure if it's going to work in the dark here, but I can definitely give it a go. So I'm just going to select my ruler feature, and then I'm just going to anchor my measurement by selecting this plus icon. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work in the dark here, unfortunately. It's the same as the measure. Just turn it. There we go. So I'm just going to select that plus there. No. Miss. Let's try that one again. <laughs> oh, I think it's going to capture my shadow here. No. Yeah, sorry. I think yeah. that's just. No, that actually works. Like, when yes. you go to property, it actually but works. It does actually yeah. work. Sorry, you didn't come. The only thing, team, just that when you are measuring, measure, measuring fridge cavities, because it turns up to me all the time, I always say to them, you know, don't like take my measurements gospel, because if they go and buy a fridge and it doesn't fit, you don't want to deal with that. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I say to them, I'm happy to measure it, but we take no responsibility with if it's. You buy a fridge and it doesn't fit because the app's measured wrong. You know what I mean? I just don't want to be dealing with a complaint with someone. They tell me Chelsea told me the fridge was 1.8 and, and now it's 1.6. <laughs> That's very true. No guarantees there. But, yeah, no, it should work for you if um just don't use it on windows, obviously, or if you've got heavy shadows or dark rooms, um, the measurement tool will work for you there. So you'll just select that plus to start and finish your measurement and then capture your image as well. So that's how we've pinned our close-up photo there. I'm just sorry, going to refresh my app here as well. Re-log in. I think I've spazzed out the measurement tool there. Pop back into my inspection and back into my 360. So if I click on my close-up that I've just pinned to the wall there, you can see all my close-up photos I would have taken to the damage of my wall will appear with any comments and conditions I've added as well. You can relocate these really easy too. So if you've pinned them in the wrong spot, all I'm going to do is tap and hold on the icon as well. And I can simply completely remove it or adjust the position. So if I select adjust position here, I can again, just realign those crosshairs to where I'd like to pin my um, icon there. Selecting confirm, we can see we've repinned it as well. I'm now going to talk to you a little bit about that maintenance icon at the bottom of the screen there. So I believe you guys are using uh, Maintenance Plus. So this maintenance feature, like the condition feature there, is going to pin it to your 360 images. However, when we go to finalize the inspection, it's actually going to give you the option to send that maintenance job back to your maintenance program. So Maintenance Plus there. So we'll pretend that there's um, a maintenance item on my window here. So I'm going to use those crosshairs, place them on my window, and I'm going to select that maintenance icon again from the bottom of the screen. Again, just selecting my feature. So I'm going to say Windows here. And it's going to open your maintenance job. So I might just say here Window. And then you can obviously elaborate in the description. Say Cracked Window. Needs to be amended. And done. So we can see there that's now pinned our maintenance feature to our window. I can simply click on that again and it will engage my job. And you'll see when I go to finalize this report, it's going to give us the option to send that back to our maintenance program as well. You can also relocate the maintenance icons the same just by tapping and holding. You can detach them from the photo or again, remove completely or adjust the position as well. All right, so if there's more you're looking to do with your 360 inspections, you're going to be finding that in this more button down the bottom corner here. So I'll take you through to this feature. They are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll point out a couple really handy ones for you. So we saw the auto face detection at the start there, but you also have the option to blur and obscure portions of your 360 photos. So this is fantastic for maybe your routines. Um, if you've taken photos and there's certificates on the wall or family photos you'd like to blur out, can definitely use this feature here. So I've selected that option there. And if I'd like to blur out Sarah, I'm sorry, or whoever's sitting there, I'm just going to select which area I'd like to blur and whatever's in that little square is going to blur out that portion of the image. Select confirm and you can see we've blurred out that part of my image there. 
Just note once you have selected a blur feature, that one can't be undone though as well. I'll take you back into the more feature. You can also set a landing 360 photo. So this one's perfect if you've got a nice hero shot of the property. Um, for your marketing purposes, if you've got a beautiful swimming pool, you might want to set that swimming pool as your landing shot. So essentially, this is just going to direct all of your viewers straight to that beautiful swimming pool and they can then navigate through the property from there. That's a good one to use for marketing purposes. You can also change the 360 photo labels. So by default, we name all of your 360 images under the area that they fall under. So if I was to take another 360 image within my entrance hall here, it'd just be labeled entrance hall number two. So you can change the label of those. However, you might have taken a 360 shot in a big pantry and you might want to label that a walk-in butler's pantry when it comes to creating a marketing virtual tour as well. You can also exclude photos from the tour. So like I was saying, you can take multiple shots. You might want to exclude that photo with the cupboards open for marketing purposes. And you can also take screenshots of your 360 images as well. However, on the PDF version of the report, we actually break down your 360 image into an elongated shot and then six breakdown sections. So you'll be able to see the top, the bottom, the sides, the back and the front automatically broken down on your PDF too. Um, you can also delete completely the 360 image just by selecting that delete button at the bottom. And again, that one can't be retrieved once you've deleted it. So that's pretty much all of the features you can add within your 360 inspection. I'm going to select done here. This is going to take me back to my inspection page. Um, and as you were asking earlier, I think you can add, still add your close up photos here. So if I'd like to take some separate photos of my walls, for example, I'll simply select my camera next to my wall feature and that'll just appear separate on the report so it just depends how you want your close-up photos to look on your reports if you'd like them pinned to your 360 or you'd like them to appear individually so that's completely up to you on how you'd like to do that I'm just going to do my compulsory reporting here so I can show you how we can finalize the report just take some photos here pretend that's my smoke alarm dismiss <laughs> So obviously, doing that. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't copy me there. So obviously you've got your renter information coming from property tree, your key form information. Now, sorry, I don't have keys with me here, so I'll use my phone there. <laughs> <laughs> and selecting done. All right, now the next tab along is the summary tab. Now here's where you have an option to upload a 60 second agent video. So these aren't compulsory to add into your reports. You can see as we're doing an entry inspection here though, this is gonna go out to our tenants before they complete their condition report. So you don't always get to meet your clients face to face. This might be a really good option for you to just welcome them to the property or introduce yourself as the property manager. It's completely up to you how you'd like to utilize this feature. Um, I will do a little demo here. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how it's going to look on the condition report. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and welcome to the property. I hope your move's gone well. And if you have any questions in regards to the condition report, please reach out. I look forward to being your property manager. That was like just over 10 seconds there, but you've got 60 seconds to say whatever you'd like. And this is going to appear for your tenants before they view their condition report. <laughs> I think it's not a bad idea for your audience. Yeah, so I was about to say. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you just wouldn't add it at the time of the inspection. And then if you just go to finalize and the PM can overlook it later, they can definitely add that in. Um, and you can, yeah, you can also upload a video there too. Um, and yeah, as you were saying too, for your routine inspections, those videos go out to your landlord. So you might want to flip the camera around even and show them how their property is presenting. Um, it's completely up to you how to use that feature. Got our agent information underneath here. And I'm just going to go ahead now and finalize my report. And you can see here in the maintenance tab though, just before I finalize that maintenance job I've created as well here. So I'm just going to select my status and select to finalize there. And here is my maintenance pop-up. So it's asking me if I'd like to post that maintenance job. I am going to select no here. I don't want to anymore in my training account there. 
And then it's going to allow us to preview that agent video. We can preview the report, see the tenancy information there. Okay. Um, that's actually through the admin portal. So I'll show you that um, a bit later in the session if you want. Yeah, you, you can. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> yeah, it is aesthetic. All right, I'll select finalize there. But yeah, you do have the option for a type signature in the admin portal and you can choose your color there. All right, so there's my finalized report that I've done today. And it's just going to be sitting in the finalized status. I'm just going to leave that there for a moment and I'll show you how we can create a marketing tour from that inspection a bit later on. Do you mind just grabbing that camera again for me? I'm now going to show you though how we can pair an exit report. Can I ask a yeah, of course. Yeah. We always need to be out of the room. Yeah, so you will capture some of our clients actually play Where's Wally and they'll like hide yeah. and then you gotta like spot like, them in the inspections. Um because <laughs> we got the branding at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that's um, but yeah, generally you're going to, cause you can take the photo on your device. Yeah. You'll just pop it in, pop out the way, take your photo there. I'll just make sure that's turned on. Felicia, Billy, it's you one, one shot the whole page. Rebooting my camera up there. Cool. And I'm now going to take you into my exit inspection. So again, just selecting inspect to take me through there. And once you've completed an entry report at your property previously, you're going to have the option to pair with an entry. So when I'm going to do my exit here, we've just done that entry inspection together. So I'm going to pair with that entry now. So I'm going to select yes here. And you can see it's going to populate all of my entry inspections that I've previously done at this property. So generally, you're going to be selecting the one relevant to this tenancy, which is most likely going to be your most recent entry. So I'll select that one there, select OK. And you can see now it's actually pulled through all of the data from my entry inspection within my exit report. So I guess this saves you from having to swap over documents to compare your report there from the tenancy. So I can tap into my previous 360. I can select my previous 360 shot there of my entrance hall and I can expand my view of that. If I've added any comments into these text boxes here, I can also tap to enlarge those comments as well. If you're pairing with the con uh, return condition report, your tenant comments are also going to appear underneath your agent comments here as well. So you'll be able to compare those two. All right, I'm now gonna select my 360 icon within my exit inspection. So this one here, separate to my entry. And I'm gonna be selecting today new photo with side-by-side -side comparison. So I'm just gonna reconnect to my camera there. And I'm just going to select join again. All right, beautiful. So this screen here is just asking us to position our tripod in a similar spot to where we had it previously. So you can use the grids there, or because this is a live view here, you can move your screen around there to see how far it was from the wall. Might just need to shuffle it slightly. And once you're happy with, uh, with it being in a similar position there, you're just going to select that next button. Then to capture my image again, I'm just going to use that shutter button. Everyone say smile. This is going to capture everyone. And that's just generating our image. All right, now it's just asking me to link the photos. So again, I'm using those crosshairs on the screen there. And I'm just going to pick a point or fixture within the room to link both of my photos. This way, when we spin the photos, they're going to rotate in unison for us on screen. So I might just pick the corner of this window here, aligning my crosshairs. And again, with this uh, bottom entry photo, I'm just going to pick the same point. So I'm just going to align those crosshairs over the same point in my window. Just simply selecting link once I'm happy with that. And you can see those green borders indicated we've linked. You can simply unlink as well and realign if you'd like to. 
going to select confirm here. There's all of our faces. And you can see as we scroll around here, this is now rotating in unison for us. I'll hide these out of the way there. So you can expand the view from your um, entry inspection report just by selecting those arrows there if you'd like to hone in on something. You can select done and you can see the back of my screen is my exit photo and I've got my entry inspection photo there in that smaller view. I'm now going to show you how to pin a comparison feature to your paired inspection reports as well. So you'll notice we have the option for that compare feature down the bottom of the screen here. So just this one. I'm going to pretend that there's something on my floor here that I'd like to compare with. So again, using those crosshairs, just going to pop them onto the floor, select my compare icon, and again, just selecting the feature that I wanted to um, compare. So the floor there. Now it's going to give you the option to adjust both the images from your entry and your exit inspection. So I can adjust and hone in on anything I'd like to. And zoom in on the floor there. And again, I can adjust the image. So this is my comparison shot from the entry that I'm using to hone in on and adjust. So this is going to appear side by side for you on the report version as well, which I'll show you shortly too. You can add comments there if you'd like to. And again, if I hop out the way, there we've pinned our comparison feature. So we can open that again in our comments and side by side shots are going to appear for us. I'm now just going to swap screens and show you what this looks like in a residential apartment. It's a little bit hard to, I guess, visualize this in this little office space here. So I'm going to open up my demo apartment for you. Select start. As you can see on the right hand side there, you've got your conditions and comments appearing. You can hide the view of these simply by selecting those little condition ticks just in the top corner. Is that view? Um, this view is just on the desktop, yeah. yeah. So if I navigate around, obviously you can, you know, you, you can view with that smaller screen that I just showed you and you can expand the view, but because it's a bigger screen here, we've got that side yeah. by side. So this is why we've linked those photos. So you can see, I can clearly see all the differences there. I don't need to rotate them one at a time. They're linked together and you can see all the differences within those photos. You'll notice here on the entry side too, this is where those close-up condition shots have been used. So this is where you might want to pin them to your microwaves, dishwashers. I can simply click on that and have that close-up view of inside of an item there as well. So I'll hop out of this one. I want to hop into the bathroom because I know we've used that comparison feature there. I'm just going to hide the my condition views, scroll around the room here. And here's where you can see that comparison features being used. So if I click on my comparison feature, we can see the towels were there in the entry, they're gone in the exit, and you can see it's pulled up my comparative photos. They are date and time stamped down the bottom there. And you can see the photo source as well, along with any comments that you've added. So this is really going to eliminate end of tenancy disputes for you. And it's going to make it really hard for those renters to argue any discrepancies, having it so transparent for you as well. I'll show you what this looks like on the PDF report too. So I'll just refresh my screen here and I'll take you through to the PDF. Obviously, you're going to have your property cover photo there, your report completion date. If I just scroll down a little bit, you're going to have your tenancy information. And here's where you're going to find your paired comments. So you're going to see on the left hand side here, your entry comments from the agent. If your tenants have made any comments, they will appear in the middle there. And you're going to have your exit comments as well on the right hand side. If we scroll down a little bit further. Here's a comparison photo for you. So again, they're going to appear on the report like this. Um, photo source time stamped with your comments as well. If I scroll down a little bit further. There's our towel shot again with our comments. And if I scroll down here, this is what I was talking about earlier with the breakdown shots. So these aren't individual photos that were taken. This top shot here was a 360 elongated image. So that's what it looks like flattened out basically. And you can scan this QR code to open up the 360 inspection. Now it's also broken down this image into those six sections. So you can see those here, they automatically break down on the report for you. 
Um, no, you don't have to label them at all. Yeah, every 360 shot you take, it's automatically going to appear with those six sections on the report. So you don't have to go and um, take each corner of your room there. So that's what your reports are going to look like. I'm now going to hop back into the app here and I'll show you how we can create a marketing virtual tour from that entry inspection we've just done as well. All right, so I'm just going to select done from here, hop out of my exit, and I'm going to go into my reports here. Now, when it goes to um, making a marketing virtual tour from an existing inspection, it does need to be in the finalized or archived status. So I guess you can't have it in progress um, or unfinished to be able to create a marketing virtual tour. So I'm going to select the one I've done today. I believe it might have been this one here. So I've just literally selected that drop down status and it's now allowing us the option to create a marketing virtual tour from there. So I can select this option. Yes to confirm. And you can see it's sitting in the draft status there. So I'm just selecting that draft status and I'm going to select um, edit from here. Now, if you'd like to edit out edit the layout, you can simply select that draft status again and select to edit the layout. And this is where you might want to go and remove some rooms. Yeah, so it's, this is the entry we've just done. This okay. is if you'd like to start a campaign, the tenant yeah. fee's finished, for example, and instead of going out to the property and creating okay. one from scratch, you might want to use it because generally with your entries, the house looks great, it's empty. Yeah. So you might want to use yeah, that. Makes, yeah. yeah. So I'll show you how to create one from scratch after this, but this is for editing a previous entry inspection. So again, I can see all the 360 photos I've taken in my entry there. I can simply tap into the 360 photos I can create my pathways here. Um, so this is where you might want to create your pathways if you haven't done that already for marketing purposes. Or again, as I was mentioning, this is where you might want to hop into that more feature. You can blur out things, remove some photos, uh, change your photo labels here, or for your marketing virtual tours, this is where you can use that more feature. So we'll pretend that I've edited my inspection there. I'm happy to publish that. So I'm just going to select that draft status again and simply select publish here. Just selecting yes to confirm and it's going to load up my inspection for me. So just note though, when we're selecting publish, it's not actually publishing it anywhere. It's just creating an active link for us to be able to copy and paste it to where we'd like to. So we have a default expiration date as well of three months. So depending how long your campaign is going to be running for, you can customize the expiry date of your marketing to a link. I'm going to be happy with the three months here. So I'm just going to select publish from here. And you can see there, it's just loaded my link up for me. So you can simply select to copy this. Oh, sorry, I've lost my thing again. There we go. So I can simply copy this just by selecting that copy button and it will let us know when it's successfully copied for us. If I close out of this, we can see it's now sitting in the publish status. And again, that's just indicating we've got that active link ready to be copied and pasted to wherever it is we'd like to. Um, yes, I believe it yeah, does, yes. Yeah. Question, what happens if I've gone, oh, you know what, I'm happy with them, I thought, oh, crap, I've missed something. Can I go back and edit that again? Yes. You, yeah. So if you've published it already, I would probably deactivate the link. I'll show you how to do that from the admin portal, and then you can go into the app, edit what you need to, and then republish that. Um, so before I hop into the admin portal and show you how to manage it from there, I'd just like to quickly show you it is really easy to create one from scratch. So if you've got a new property coming onto your portfolio and you wanted to create a marketing virtual tour for it, you're just going to be in the virtual tours tab, which we're already in in Inspection Express, and you just need to select that plus button in the top right hand corner. That will just allow you to completely start a new marketing tour. So I can select this plus button here. It will just allow you to select which property you'd like to start that inspection for or that marketing tour, sorry. So I'm going to select my property here. Yes to confirm. 
and then it's in that draft status again. So if you've already taken 360 shots of that property, you can upload all of your 360 images via clicking on this Polaroid icon here. Or if you're there at the property and you wanted to start your marketing virtual tour there on site, you'll be selecting this 360 icon here. So if I select this option, this is again, I've set the layout for my property that's saved here. So I can just enter through my property, taking my photos in my rooms there. So that's how you create one from scratch. I'm going to select done here. And I'm now just going to bring my admin portal back up so I can show you how we can manage these marketing tours from the admin portal. Close out of my appraisal kit there. All right, so I'm just in the admin portal here. I'll move this out the way there. And I'm just going to head to the virtual tours tab at the top of the screen. So this is, oh, I'm just going to re-log in here. So the virtual tours tab is where you're going to find all of your active or inactive marketing virtual tours. So we can see up here, this first one, this is the one I've just published there. You can see the published and expiry date that we've set there as well. And we can see this timeline here indicating how long we have left till expiry as well. You can also view the analytics by clicking onto this icon here, but you can also view the analytics from this drop down box as well. So, this is where you'll find your options to view. You can extend your expiry date. You can also deactivate your link here. This is where you can also delete it completely, or you can copy your virtual tour link from the desktop as well and paste to wherever it is you'd like to. So, it might be readomain.com or your agency website. You can just copy and paste that there. You can, yeah, you can send the link completely directly as well. So I'm no storage limit or anything. No, no, no. Yeah, it should be fine to just send the link. We've not had any issues with that before. Just the expiry date that you set. Yeah, so you can extend the expiry date. So if you'd like to prolong your campaign there, you just extend the expiry and amend that. So once it's expired, the link's just going to be invalid and you're not going to be able to access that virtual tour anymore. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll take you through to view the analytics here. Now, note, we've just published this, so I'm not going to have too much information here to share with you. But you can expect to find information such as the total number of visits, the average time spent, your unique visitors, devices used, your top source of traffic, your browser, and also your most viewed 360 photo. So there's some quite helpful information there for you regarding your marketing virtual tours. If I take you back up the top here, you can also filter the insights as well. So this is where you can um, use your insights here to view how much you'd like to view of that. So if I want to do the last 30 days there, obviously I don't have any viewers yet, but um, that's where you'll see your insights for your marketing tours. If I select X out of there, you can also view the history here. And this is just going to indicate to you all the actions performed on your marketing tour if you'd like to track what you've done with that so far or if you're swapping um, inspectors with that. All right. Well, that's actually pretty much most of the content I wanted to go through with you guys today. Is there any questions regarding your 360 inspections or marketing virtual tours or how to pair an exit report? Yeah. Uh, so yep. it have to be set up at each uh, inspection or just once? So you don't have to set up the pathways at all. Yeah. It's completely up oh, to okay. you. Yeah, I just be I would be recommending them for your marketing purposes. I guess it feels yeah. like the viewers walking through the property without having to navigate through those areas at the bottom. Yes, it will. Yeah. yeah. So those pathways once you create Yeah, sorry, but if you reopen the inspection, they're obviously yeah, going to be there for same, you. Yeah. For no, no. Yeah. Yep. Was there any other questions there as well? Yeah, we'll have it. We've got to work out a sort of a system of a like, like a, there are expensive pieces of equipment, so please take care of them when the process of And they do break. Yeah. They so are, yeah. The lenses the, are pretty fragile. Fine with you, they need to return back to the office. Question, yeah, question about sort of the, the, the team and using them. Yep. Um, like it's a full day of like inspections. 
So the battery life lasts about two and a half hours, but it does have a battery saving mode. So it will power off as you've seen, I'm not using it. So it's powered off for me there. Yeah. Um, so it's two and a half hours of continuous use. Yeah. So, I mean, I've used it for a few trainings within a day and I haven't needed to charge it throughout that one day. I'd be charging it every night. I think once, yeah, you've, so once you guys have finished your inspections, really yeah, I'd be suggesting maybe plugging them in overnight in the office. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what was that? Yeah. Portable charger. Um, I guess if you actually had a portable charger, you can plug in the charging point for the cameras. They're just a small black cord and you could probably plug yeah. that into a portable as well if you must as well. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I guess the point of the 360 cameras is it's now eliminating you from having to take those photos yeah. of every area. So you're really just taking that 360 shot and then any close-ups of discrepancies or in the kitchen, for example, those inside oven shots or dishwasher. So it's really just the close-ups that you're now using your phone or iPad to take those photos with. It is going to eliminate a lot of... Um, a lot of time for you there we actually also have an ai feature that's coming out soon so that's actually going to ai generate all of your comments as well yeah based on the photos yeah I can't so no so with your 360 shot as i was saying you might want to shut the cupboards take the photo and then open them all up and then take another photo so then you can zoom in on your 360 yeah you'll be able to You'll be able to zoom in, okay. but if you'd like to take the close-up shot of just the cupboard, yeah, then you'll use that close-up condition yeah. shot and pin that on. So it's really dependent on how you'd like your report to look there. Um, but yeah, the AI comment's still in, I think, beta testing at the moment, but it should be coming out shortly. And essentially, you'll just take your photo and the AI is going to scan 360 you've taken and it's going to write all of the comments for your report for you. Um, which is pretty insane to think about, actually. That will, obviously, that will definitely save us time. <laughs> I know, he's been one in the background doing it. Yeah. yeah it is um, going to be very honest. I'd like to go and actually put the tripod Yeah, I was going to say. Me. I'm anxious about setting up. Yeah, but, yep. no. I was going to say, who yeah. wants to have a go at setting one up? And do that, what do we put the camera into these things? Um, maybe Daryl? Yeah. 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 Well, if you can, like, Daryl really, really needs that. Are they coming? They come with like a cover or something. Yeah, like it, does yeah it does come with a little cover. This is a Anybody volunteer? Yep, come on up. Got another camera there? Head this way? Yeah, Oh, well, when that, that's great. When that comes oh, down. Yeah. 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 You all need to be confident on it. Don't have to do this one. Just have an eye card come up every single year. Nina, do we have seven? Five. Yeah, okay. Five, like 300. That's why I said to that. Wait, all right. right. Yeah. So you just pop your tripod open. I'll let you do it so you can give it a go. 
Yeah, very, very travel safe. Yep, there you go. Yeah, you just you just tighten that one there once it's in, and then you just make sure they're all snipped shut before you hook your camera on. Yep. Perfect. Just grab your camera there. Oh, no, because, yeah, because I just sold this one here to some, and I upgraded to yeah. the X4. Oh, right. Very good. Yeah, the X4s are really good. Yeah, I haven't even started using it yet because I just, just, uh, just sold my camera like about two or three weeks ago. And I okay. it was on my package yet. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Oh, I also attached it to my drone too as well. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Your drone, yeah, that would, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Are they the best for a package? The same? Yeah, that's the most important thing. That's the tripod is stable before you put the camera on there. And the so flaps? So right here it comes up to as well. Yeah, so, so you flip open the flaps and uh, let them open it. Yeah. Yeah. And then that one is that one. Okay, it's not as hard as I'm going to do. The only other thing that I'm going to say with your the top of your tripod is have it upways like this one. Don't put your camera on sideways. Upways. Yeah. I've got that too. Is yeah. this Chelsea in the real estate area? Yeah, okay, go on. And the best way to do it is to hold the camera still and then right. So is it recommended to have some pouches? Do you have a camera to try? No, I don't have a camera. Oh, okay. Do you have the camera around or something like that? Or yeah, maybe I can do that. So, so people can get the bill. Yeah, of course. No SD card. Uh, I guess so. I have got all the cards in here. Oh, what's going on? Yeah, it's an SD card inside of it, but you guys got an SD card inside of it? Yeah, I think we've just put the. Oh. Sorry, guys. Oh my god, we've passed out. Yeah, cool. Work or take photos? Uh, sorry, yeah. No, that's all right. You can let people take photos. Um, I mean, I would leave it on just so it's like a clear photo. But I mean, you can if you you can if you want. Yeah, I'm going to go to the other side. No, I'm all right. I'm no, no, right. you guys are the one who have to pass around. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Be careful with it. Trav, we broke something. Oh, no, I'm not going to get it. It's going to be Is it all the way? Actually, yeah, you can have to stay from the bottom. Yep. Realistically, uh, I, I, I know most of them are all black and in it in it visible, but uh, invisible. That's not. Really. <laughs> it's, it's all invisible. But I yeah. The silver type chrome. Oh. Kind of uh, yeah. Monopod. Yeah. Makes it invisible anyway, so I'm not oh, sure. Oh wow. Not sure how uh, Insta oh, does. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess that's why we use those logos because it's going to cover the tripod. So that's why we put your agency logo over the tripod so yeah. you can't see it anymore, mm. I guess. But I am because I never used a 360 in, in uh, virtual property. Oh, uh, okay. And I was looking at Metaport and yep. all those other uh, software like, oh, God. So yeah. Cool that. Yeah, no. Which is why I never used it. Yeah. But I just used that property and things like that. Yeah. Now, as far as using it for the, uh, the construction press, we will probably most likely need some group session. Yeah. Um, just before we even get used to it. Yeah, I reckon you guys will have questions and again, we're happy to answer any questions you guys have got. Yeah. Um, but the uh, the actual quality of the cameras I find are really good. <laughs> like oh, yeah. when I was using it, it was really, as long as you take um, care of the lens and you don't scratch the lens, because then you'll start getting lines on your images. So you're just gonna be so careful. Oh, we also get, uh, protective lenses. That's I believe you do have the protective lenses on. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I see. I can see it now. Yeah. Yeah, because they are quite light and flimsy. <laughs> uh, they also got the tempered glass uh, for the touch screen as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think your cameras are getting charged up there.
It's heavy. Oh. <laughs> Are we just inserting the SD cards at the back there, Sarah? Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Playing around. Yep. <laughs> that's all right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.